Hi, everybody, and welcome to a episode of the Margaret Fontana Media Podcast. And we are doing a Zoom podcast today in partnership with Professor Kathy Magrino for the RiderCom 292 content for social media class, summer 2021. Woo! <laughs> that, was, that was not planned. Yeah. <laughs> we just did that. So um, welcome everybody. Nice to meet everybody. I have not seen you in person. We've been all kind of communicating in our discussion area. I mean, I have with everyone. I have and not so seen them in person either. So this is the first opportunity I get to speak on video too. Yeah. So, so, so thank you all. It's been a great summer class so far, I think. And I hope you've enjoyed it too. I know we're almost done. Uh, we only have until the wow. end to finish up but time flies time's and, going thank so you. quick thank you margaret for always uh stepping up and and you know giving us your time and your absolutely your this is fun. and talent and uh teaching us about podcasting especially so yeah so thank you and i appreciate that everybody submitted questions for um today's podcast actually and professor magrino will share more news about those questions submitted i won't spill the beans. I'll leave that to Professor Magrino. Um, but I think our goal today is actually talking about and answering these questions that um, some some of you had submitted that made it to the top of the list to be answered for this podcast. So Professor Magrino, should we start with our first question? Yes. And actually what I'm going to do too is um, the top five questions were voted on by our class. So the class, the classmates, uh, you all voted and we picked the uh, top five that had the most votes. Um, and each of the winners, the top five authors of the uh, questions um, are receiving an Amazon gift card, a $10 Amazon Whoa. gift card. And um, yeah, so you'll have to claim, send me your email addresses if you're a winner and I will uh, send you your card, okay? So that's, here we go. that's fun. That's very yeah. impressive to win. Yeah, something. no, it's fun. So I like to make learning as fun as possible. So. I know. See, if we were in person, like, you know, we used to throw candy in class, candy, you know, and just kind of like have that reward. But well, I'll be back in the classroom in September, actually. I'm hoping, you know, if everything keeps moving forward. Yeah, that'll be good. That'll um, be fun. So you should come back in with me too and we can throw candy again. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know, or maybe you do know, but um, just I am writer alumni. I graduated 1997. I was a uh, radio and TV communication major. We didn't have digital media or film weren't exactly those, those majors yet, even though like some of the traditional pieces of what you're learning, what you are learning uh, might be similar to what we were learning back then. Mm -hmm. But um, so you know, so when I, when I share and I participate in the writer, um, you know, guest speaking things that Professor Margarita invites me to, I'm happy to do it because it makes me happy to, you know, really be part of where I went to school. So enjoy what you're doing. And you're very lucky to have Pre Professor Magrino as your professor for this class. Thank you. Hey, and we should tell them how we met through social media, actually. Margaret and I did not meet. Yeah. We met on, through social media because I was teaching, this is back in 2009, and I was teaching at Ryder for five years at that point, but I was working in my classroom and trying to show my students um, demonstrating live how to use Twitter. So Twitter was just coming out and yeah. I had been on it and I was like so impressed with it. Um, so we were tweeting from the classroom, one of the J labs in the fine arts building. And uh, I put a thing out about Ryder University and teaching my students about Twitter. And and Margaret was happened to be on at that time and uh, following. Yeah. And with the hashtag, I guess, the Rider University or the whatever. Yeah. And I, you, you were in my feed somehow. And I was like, oh my God, you know, she's writing about her class. Like you were writing a tweet, like I'm showing my class today how to use Twitter. And I'm a writer professor, you know, and I was like, oh, wow. So I started typing you back. Yeah. And that's how and it all started. It. And then I said, would you love to come in and meet with us in person? And uh, yeah. the rest is history. So every so it's now what, how many, 12 years? Yeah, 12 years you've been- Oh my God, really? Yes. Wow. So, so yeah. Oh my God, you just you just made me like think about that. I was like, wow, that's a long time. Yeah, well, thank you for doing that. Yeah, new chapter, new yes. moment. So here we are. Um, right, 2021, back to our questions, back to content for social media and learning yes. how to podcast. And and never before has social media been so important. And this is the moment where content creators 
and creating different parts of, um, you know, I, I would say like the strategy behind content marketing has changed. The strategy mm -hmm. behind, behind content creating for social media has changed. Um, but one of the strongest pieces is actually podcasting. And so um, a lot of what I'm sharing and a lot of the answers I'm going to give have to do with a lot of the traditional pieces, but a lot of what has been kind of built since we are learning more about technology, we're using more, we're trying to connect more life events, a pandemic, a pandemic has forced us, like pushed us forward into digital transformation. So this is the best moment to hear about it, the best moment to talk about it. And um, so we can, keep we can learning, get keep learning about it because it's constantly changing and evolving. It's changed so much in the past, even 12 years since we've been. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, as you were talking about it, like we were using a basic idea of Twitter, just like, hi, how are you now? It's like crisis communications. Now it's used for top political officials. It's customer used, service. Customer service. It's used across for everything, you know? So it's, it's fascinating how far it's come. Okay. All right. So here we go. Yeah. So our first winner with seven votes, uh, Hannah. Congratulations, Hannah. Okay. So um, it's a complex question. So it's got, I'll read the whole thing to you now. Um, so how did you plan out each podcast and how long do you give yourself between each podcast to start new ideas on the next? What is your favorite podcast you planned and what was your least favorite and why? Lastly, if you could change anything in terms of planning, promoting, producing your podcast, what would it be? Okay, so I'll take the first part of it, which is how did I plan out each podcast and how long do I give myself in between each podcast to start? So I will say that a lot of my podcasts are very organic and the number one piece of advice I would give to anyone starting a podcast, you really have to talk about what you know. So sometimes if you're given an assignment, let's say, and someone says, oh, you know, create a podcast. And some sometimes people are like, oh my God, what am I gonna create a podcast about? It's It's not about like, you know, digging into something to find something to talk about. Your best uh, formula for success is actually talking about what you know. So if you have some type of uh, affinity or love for some type of topic, maybe you're, you have a hobby, maybe you love media, maybe you love film, maybe you're a film critic, or maybe you become a film critic by starting a podcast to talk about films every week. So it really has to be about what, like you wanting to do it, you wanting to love and talk about your own topic that interests you. That's how I actually plan it out. It's very organic, but I will also say what influences me is actually what's happening in digital and technology and media. So I am that person. I'm on Twitter morning, noon, and night, um, you know, in between meetings, in between when I have time, I'm always reading what's happening because that then influences me to talk about it. And the reason I want to talk about the latest and greatest is because it gets me more audio listens through how I'm writing my titles, how I'm writing my descriptions, how I'm tagging things. So if I'm talking about how TikTok's coming out with a new tool that's going to change the game uh, and I just read it in the morning, I'm going to do a podcast about it because I know it's going to interest that who my, my audience are now kind of collected around me because they know I talk about media, digital, social, um, and anything trending. So that's kind of like the process in finding the topics and getting influenced by the topics. Um, what is my favorite podcast I've planned? Um, I would say that during COVID, I re-motivated myself and wanted to do something different to keep the podcast going. And I mean, we were all, we, all, everybody was in that state of like, everybody was home. Nobody was doing anything. People weren't at work. You were home. Um, maybe you were working from home. But what I did for myself, I reignited the podcast and I invited different people onto the podcast. I actually went person to person interview podcast. It wasn't a solo podcast anymore. So for instance, I had Professor Magrino, like what we're doing. I had a friend of mine who's a Broadway star, which isn't about digital media, but we ended up talking about digital media because she is a Broadway star and one of the biggest Broadway plays at the time. She uses digital media and social media to promote her shows, promote herself, promote her band, promote all her other side projects, her film. So it was pretty fascinating. Um, I interviewed one of the top like Instagram experts. Um, and when I tell you people were home, everybody was home, like top experts were like, I would send an invitation be like, hi, would you be interested in talking about blah, blah, blah. 
people were very open to it. So that was my own, that was like my summer project where I reignited the podcast and that became like, I wouldn't say it was one episode, having all those people on was actually my favorite part of doing the podcast. It's very time consuming. It requires a lot of planning and it requires a lot of like detail oriented, um, you know, production planning. So, um, I would say I wouldn't change anything in the process because I actually learn and change things as I go, because sometimes you talk to someone or you, you ask someone to be part of your podcast and they might be super experienced and have had other type of experiences with interviews. And they'll ask if I'm going to do a, B and C. And I'm like, Oh, maybe I should start doing a, B and C. So then it forces me to actually add another layer of my skill to something. It just depends what it is. Oh, and yeah. speaking of the whole planning part too, I will be sharing um, your template. Yes, that's yeah. good. Yeah, it's a good template and, and it's it's a good base to, to start from. So look for that in the module folder um, on, on Canvas. I will put that up when I, when I post this video. Okay. Okay. All right. So thank you. So yeah. also, it's actually a tie for first place because also uh, with seven votes was Tiana's question. Um, so... She asks, when it comes to podcasting, how do you go about choosing a specific audience to cater to? Essentially, if anyone can listen in, how do you grab the attention of those who you target the most? Right. And I think this kind of ties back into my question from number one, which was about really speaking to the things you love to talk about. So if you love fashion, you're talking about fashion. And then it kind of exudes out once you start becoming consistent and like you're putting out a podcast every Monday and you're talking about like, uh, again, I'm using just like fashion, let's say fashion or sports, right? So say you're putting out a show every Monday, right? About, I'm going to go with the sports because I already said fashion, but if you're doing a, a sports podcast, so I'm so excited about talking about Professor Magrino's team, the Mets. So I'm going to do a report every week about the latest baseball news, the latest baseball games that happened last week, who you think the next, you know, who's going to the World Series. So it's really like your audience builds once you start, uh, once you start your consistency. And that means you have to stick to almost a production schedule. See, all of these things are like moving parts. It's not me answering this question. It's like almost like we have to backtrack because it's about that production plan and, and your commitment. And you're saying like every Monday, I'm going to do a podcast and I'm going to push it out by like before noon every Monday. And I'm talking about sports and I'm going to, you know, make sure I, I cover these three things every week. And so then you're sharing it onto your social media. So maybe like your friends know that you're a big sports person. And so they're like, wow, Kathy's doing a sports podcast. She just posted it on Facebook. I'm going to have to go listen. So your audience starts to build because all of these platforms that you're using for podcasting also um, really work to build audience. I mean, a lot of it's organic, but a lot of these platforms are so good now, like Spotify, Anchor, um, you know, Google, all of them work to build your audience. And you don't have to spend money to advertise your podcast. You could, I mean, all the big podcasts do, but it's really, it's really about building an organic audience first, if you're starting out. So, you know, um, and, and it's a baseball reference, but the movie, it's like, if you build it, they will come. And this is true, but you have to be consistent. You have to be consistent. Field of dreams. That's it. I was like, what movie? Kevin Costner. Yes. <laughs> it's an old, old movie at this point, but so that's my answer, but it's multi-layer. Excellent. All right. So there's also a tie for the third place, I guess. Um, it's Ashley and Maya. So Ashley's question was, uh, when creating a podcast, what is necessary in terms of consistency? In an effort to be consistent, uploading on the same day each week, month, relative, the same length episodes focused on one specific niche. She's asking like what it, you know. Right. What it, um, or do you believe podcasting that comes with more freedom in terms of content? Right. Yes, you have to be consistent. Um, yes, you'll you will be more successful if you cater to a niche audience and you you begin to speak more towards what you think is like your narrowed consumer or your your audience. You know, so it's like again, if you're talking about if I'm talking about digital media and social, I know that I'm attracting that 
you know, audience around me. If I'm talking about sports, if I'm talking about fashion, each of those things are very important or any topic is very important to build around. Right. Hank, can you do a broad podcast? Like, can you be Joe Rogan and talk to anybody and talk about anything? Absolutely. But the only reason why Joe Rogan is so successful is because he's been consistent. And that's how he got his huge deal with Spotify is because his podcast started out like lonely and dreary and like, you know, like a guy's podcast on YouTube. It wasn't, it wasn't what it is right now. Like people are like lined up to be on his podcast. And the only reason why his podcast grew the way it did was because, you know, at first he was talking a lot about MMA fighting because he's the uh, UFC guy. Like he goes in and does like the moderating for that, or he goes in after a fight and, you know, he, he goes up to you like in the ring. So his, his whole persona and his whole audience started that way. And that's just one example. But like, if you look at, um, you know, you have different podcasters out there who worked with people, um, you know, like other partners or they had like, um, what's the word? Like, yeah, like it's like partner, partner podcast. So, you know, you have to understand like what it is that you want to talk about. And then all of a sudden, like those people start to gravitate around you. So for example, um, I always talk about digital social media or media, but at the same time, like my last couple of podcasts, I ended up talking about like top five ways to be happy. And that stemmed from an article that was actually very closely associated to like one of these top influencers in digital media. Then she ended up writing an article about top five ways to be happy. And I was like, that's weird. But it was like, it made sense because you know, we were all kind of like living our pandemic life. And I thought to myself, let me change it up. And I'm going to actually talk about that. And I did. And the podcast was great. It got a lot of listens. And I think what I'll do in the future for myself, I'll thread that in where, when I feel, when I feel, you know, like naturally, like I want to do it. And that's the other thing, like you really have to want to do your podcasts, you know, forced topic and podcast, like it's never going to work. So when I feel the need to be more open or general, um, I plan it, you know, and, and I'll, I'll talk about it. And, and to be honest with you, um, there might be the one not planned podcast where I just feel inspired to do it. So what I'll do is I'll record it. And then when the moment's right, I'll say, you know what, I know I recorded this topic. Let me, um, let me upload it. You know, so, so sometimes you just have to like be a little open, but consistency is key. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. And so, like I mentioned, uh, Maya also tied for the third place there. Um, so she's our fourth question. Um, what do you do when you feel like you're running out of things to say about a specific topic? Like, do you have any tips on what you do? Yeah. And, and, you know, I think a lot of that has to do with planning your podcast to be concise. Yeah. Never, ever over commit yourself to saying like, even to yourself, well, I'm going to do my podcast. I'm going to do an hour long podcast. Like, oh my gosh, don't ever do that. That's a snooze fest. Um, you know, as we know, everybody's attention span is very, very short. And that has to do with just digital and like the transformation of how we're living. And, um, you know, I think like a statistic is like between three and six seconds. Like you have, I mean, you might be tuned out right now as we're talking about podcasts. I hope not. I hope, I hope, I hope not. But, but it's just, so like, we have to keep your attention. I have to keep right. your attention. Right. right. Um, we have one more question. So hang yeah, in. one more question and somebody wins big prizes. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the point is like, you have to, um, you know, you have to like think a little bit holistically on all of this like it's there there is like no playbook actually on any of it like as much as the, all of these things that like I've developed for myself and what has like kept me um very committed to the podcast are things that like felt right for me and felt like okay this feels good I was getting good attention um I will tell you that doing the podcast I actually positioned and packaged myself everything I did over the pandemic actually worked in my favor for what I'm doing now, because it, it positioned and packaged me according to what I like to talk about. So, and folks like, look, people look you up and people say, wow, you're talking about this and you're doing that. So, 
you know, there, there are many, many layers to why you would produce a podcast. Um, but you really have to be consistent. You have to really like what you're talking about and you really have to just, you know, yeah, I think the passion has to be there. You know, you have to have not only knowledge, but you have to really care about what you're talking about because yeah. otherwise it's not going to come, you know, it's, it, you can't be fake about that. So no, no. And sometimes, you know, if you, if you do test this idea of producing a podcast and then you end up putting it out and like somebody comments or somebody has something to say about it, it's, it's, it's a really good feeling. I mean, sometimes people are negative and like they, they'll, they'll, somebody can post something negative, but like, usually I like delete people like who are negative. I mean, immediately, I don't even, boom, yeah, gone. I, don't them. I have no um, that yeah things to say anyway. so you have to really just you know kind of be okay with you know sharing what it is that you feel passionate about so you know professor marina is right like if you're passionate about it you're going to succeed in anything you do but if you're just like meh i'll try it and i'm not sure like it's not going to go anywhere okay thanks all right and finally our fifth and final question our winner is Austin. Austin had this question. Um, he asked, when deciding what platform to use to publish your podcasts, if any, what are the major benefits of some platforms compared to others? For example, um, Apple Podcasts compared to Google Podcasts. Yeah. And if so, what are the best platforms to use? Like, what do you recommend? Yeah. And so, you know, the thing about all of the podcasts now is that they're all intermixed and interpromoted with each other. Yeah. So if you decide to do a podcast on Apple, on iTunes, that has like a partnership and cross promotional, um, you know, element to it that it could distribute out to other podcasts. It's, it's like, it's like a distribution platform that sometimes you're not even aware of. Um, so if you use a platform like Anchor, you're going to get full distribution across the board on all the platforms. If you use a platform like um, there's another podcasting platform, it escapes me at the moment, but there's another one that does the same thing where it distributes across a million platforms. So you have to actually test a lot of the platforms first. Mm -hmm. um, and I would test it with one thing, you know, like sign up for it, test it with one do like a test run, uh, you know, make up a fake podcast if you have to, just to kind of like get the feel for it. Um, but that's the really amazing thing about the platforms, the technology and all the platforms is improving daily. And because podcasts are so popular and because it's like just one of the fastest moving pieces of marketing um, that folks are like really adding to their strategy, you know, the tech companies are almost like forced to show up more and to show up better. So um, I wouldn't say there's any one platform, but I would say that you'd have to just do your research to make sure it's what you want. Like you can sign up on Spotify and um, produce a podcast. I mean, you don't have to be Joe Rogan. You can, you can do it. Anybody can do it. Um, but again, favorite? what do you use? But I've used Anchor. I've used Zencaster. Zencaster is now also stepping up their game and, you know, adding a ton of new elements. Like a lot of these podcasting platforms are adding video. So like what we're doing right now, um, we are going to take this and I'm going to split the audio from this and the video from this. So the audio I'm going like, and you don't need to have like, you know, a radio TV audio background, but you know, it's good to just, you're going to teach yourself how to like actually learn and, and identify the pieces of production. So I'm going to take the audio from this and I'm going to, I'm going to put it in one of the platforms, um, you know, appropriately deciding like where, where we want to put it. And then I'm going to take the video portion of this. We're going to call this a zoom podcast, which is what I did over the summer when I was telling you about like the different guests that I had on and this part I upload to YouTube. And so when you think about podcasts, like podcasts are um, not just audio anymore, they're also video. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm going to double up on my distribution and I'm going to double up on like the potential for my podcast to be seen and heard. So seen with video and then heard through all the different distribution audio platforms. Excellent. All right. So that's it. So we're wow. done. Yeah, those five questions real fast. But yeah, those are really good questions. And like I said, I, I invite anybody to explore 
more on your own. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's actually the only way to learn, believe it or not, through podcasting, like don't, don't take any expensive course online that says like, learn how to podcast. Um, this course that you're taking with professor Magrino is teaching you the fundamentals of like how to build content. And so when you know, and learn how to build the content, then those other layers of distribution, which is a podcast, which is social media, which are like the technology tools come into play, but you have to have your fundamentals of content down first before you can like extract it and be like, you know what, Professor Magrino, I'm going to produce my own podcast. Like if you yeah, don't have this, like our class already are doing that. So they see? are producing podcasts and also uh, several people are doing it as a final project to do. Yeah. Work. Well, that's great. That's, that's so fun, you know? Yeah. Um, and I would also invite anyone to connect with me on LinkedIn um, awesome. or in the group. If you have any questions or if you feel like there's something that maybe no one talks about in podcasting, you can yeah. always ask me and i um, very, very happy to share. Yes. So thank you. Thank you for your time again, Margaret. And uh, thank, you. thank you to the class for writing such great questions. I really appreciate your participation this past six weeks. Um, I can't believe how quickly these summer classes go, but um, I'm also here for you beyond our summer sessions. So if any of you have any questions or um, need anything um, in the fall semester, I'll be on campus actually Tuesdays, um, definitely at 430 in the, one of the J labs. I'm not sure um, in the fine arts building, but I'm not sure exactly which one yet. And um, yeah, so I hope to see you maybe in person and uh, Thank you all again. Thank you, Margaret. Yay, thank I you. Everybody enjoys the rest of their summer. I yeah, guys, have a great summer. And oh. thank you for letting me be part of your class. Oh, and you so make much. sure you connect. I can't thank you enough. Thank right? you. Thank oh my you. gosh. Thank you. Yeah, guys. Bye-bye. I'll, I'll see everybody soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.